All right, y'all, welcome back. So this video came across my timeline. So Nicholas Bowling, not sure who that is, um, but, you know, seems like another Christian creator. So shout out to Nicholas, to Nicholas Bowling. He was at a pride festival doing some preaching, um, which, yo, I have a lot of respect for y'all. People who go out to these festivals and, you know, have the boldness to, to get up and, and preach literally in enemy territory where, you know, 97.99% of people there do not want to hear what you have to say or and are actually angered by what you have to say. I have a lot of respect for people who can do that um, in grace and be used as a vessel for the Holy Spirit. So anyway, he was preaching at this pride festival and apparently this individual in the yellow uh, caution vest got saved. And I think the even more incredible part, which I guess we're going to watch, right, is that this individual is trans. So let's see how this plays out. Um, I'm very interested to see, uh, you know, what happens. So let's get into it. Sorry, did it? Did, did you have a question? Oh, I was just wondering. So if we're all made in God's image and everybody has free will, then why not just come here and say... Hold on, I'm going to turn the... the uh, what am I saying? <laughs> I'm going to turn the subtitles on. It's kind of loud, obviously, because they're outside. There's a lot going on. But let's watch it anyway. Remember that God loves you. God is love. And leave it at that. Why do you have to come here and be like, you make a 180 degree turn and you can go in the right way because you're, why not just leave the ultimate thing, which is what you are trying to preach here is that God is love. So why come here? Because it, it does seem like you're passing a judgment, but it's between that person and their God when that judgment comes just come here you would get way more uh you get more what is it uh flies with honey why don't you just come here and make it a point god is love god loves you you're made in his image instead of like god loves you but you know you need to turn this way yeah, so, so the, the Bible refers to God being the Father, and then all those who believe in Him, they become the children. So I, I'm just going to give you a scenario that's pretty similar to what you're saying. Is, is this your daughter? Yes. Okay, so say your daughter is wanting to go out and rob a bank or rob a, say, say she's going to rob a doctor's office and get a bunch of pills and stuff. And then she goes and she robs those, the alarm goes off, okay. they end up getting caught, and they end up going. Okay to jail, right? So then she goes to jail. Was it enough for her? Yo, this dude is so disrespectful. <laughs> the way he just screamed that right in front of his face is wild. To know that you loved her. Hey, listen, I love you so much, honey. You're, you're, I, you're birthed from me and I love you so much. Was that enough info? To, to keep her from going and from doing what she did and then getting put in jail. No, many times you teach your daughter what's right and what's wrong and hey, do this and don't do that. And when she's a kid and she's growing up, you're telling her no, don't do that. Why? What? Hey, don't run out in the street. Why are you teaching your kid? And many times if they run out in the street, eventually, I don't know how you discipline, you're either going to discipline them verbally, you're going to put them in timeout somehow, you're going to spank them, something's going to happen. But you discipline her. You, you don't just tell her. Fuck you! So you Yo, why do people hate Christians so much? <laughs> I don't get it. Look, I apologize. This, this is a second video today where, is, you know, the language has gotten kind of crazy. I apologize. I should have watched this before, but I didn't. I just, I apologize. But why do people hate Christians so much? That's a question I just, I, I just do not understand. And yes, I understand the Bible tells us that we will be hated and, and, and all that kind of stuff. I just don't get it. I feel like if you really knew who God was, how could you not love him? How could you not love him? Let's continue. You, 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 you can see the concept. Listen, God loves you. He loves you so much. If you'll turn to him and away from sin and believe in Jesus Christ as you. Wow, they got the baby. They got the baby at the Pride Festival? I don't know why my voice got high like that. Forgive me. That will never happen again. But why does a baby at the Pride Festival? Does that really need to happen right now, guys? I don't get it. I don't get it. 
Dear Lord, you'll be saved from the wrath that is to come upon each and every sinner. And he will welcome you in. He'll adopt you as his child. He'll give you eternal life. He'll heal you from your anxieties. Many of you have anxiety. You have depression. You have self-harm. You go to therapists. You take medications for it. But listen, it only masks it. It sweeps the problem under the rug. Jesus can heal you. Jesus can take you. Children at the Pride Festival. Your anxieties away. Jesus can take around all these people who are dressed all provocative and stuff like that. And you just think that's a safe place to bring your children. Blows my mind. Your depression away. Jesus can take your loneliness and the shame and the guilt and the hatred and the bitterness and the heartache and the pain that's in your that's in your lives right now. God can take that away. And it's through his son named Jesus Christ. He loves you so much. Jesus came and he lived a perfect life. He never sinned one time. That was perverted. Jesus never sinned one time. So what he earned with his life was everlasting life. What I have earned with my life is to be eternally separated from God in an eternal lake of fire. That's the same thing each and every human, because we've all sinned. We've earned death and we deserve death with our lives. But Jesus came and he was perfect. He earned and what he deserved was everlasting life. Jesus came. And even though he was perfect, he died. Christians. Jesus, you don't represent I represent Christ. Jesus Christ, Amen. not you. I represent Amen. Jesus. Amen. So Jesus came and he suffered a brutal death. They took him and they began to whip him and mock him and dress him up and punch him in the face as he was blindfolded. They put a crown of thorns upon Jesus' head. They took him, they made him carry a cross upon all the open wounds. They nailed him to a tree with seven inch spikes where they then allowed him to die and drove a spear up through his ribs to make sure that he was dead. He was buried in a tomb and God resurrected Jesus Christ on the third day. He ascended into heaven. And if you will call upon Jesus as your king, if you will make him your Lord and begin to submit your life to him and begin to love him and begin to obey him, then he will lead you into blessing and he will lead you as a shepherd leads a sheep into everlasting life, into rivers of living water. If you don't turn away from your sins, then you will endure the punishment of sin, which is eternal destruction in a lake of fire and brimstone. God <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. God doesn't want that for you. God doesn't desire you to have to endure the punishment of your own free will and the own choices and decisions that you have made, but he rather returns. So, you know, it's interesting. So I believe, like I said in the, in the beginning of this video, the person who ends up coming to Christ is this person right here in the, in the yellow. So this person, I think it's just a dude. So I'm just going to say, dude, this dude was listening to the message the entire time. And this dude is trying to hand out his own flyers, but he's listening to the message this entire time. I don't even know if the preacher, you know, in this case, the street preacher, I don't know if he was necessarily preaching at this individual. He's trying to reach the people who are, you know, marching in the parade and stuff like that. But just as a byproduct, this person is lingering and sticking around and, and listening to the message. I just find that so interesting for you to come to him and he's made the way. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way to eternal life. He's the way to knowing the Father and becoming a child of the Most High God. The Bible says that in everlasting life, there will be no more pain. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more death. That he's going to wipe away each and every tear. As a father loving his people, loving his sheep, loving his children, he's going to provide a perfect place. Because this is not the forum for what you are doing. This is the forum for that. So how do you reconcile yeah. the difference? So, like I said, you, yeah. you destroyed my day. Yeah. She said, you destroyed my day. I was trying to be gay in peace and you destroyed my day with your Jesus Christ words. <laughs>
just because that's not what this is for. Yeah. And I had to I, listen I hear to it for like six hours. Yeah, that's great. Not that your that's fun was great. taken. Not that your fun was taken. Why is it great? But the fact that you heard about Jesus, Most that's great. Most of the great. stuff that you said is his. Yo, I like this guy. <laughs> I like this guy. Historically proven incorrect. It's not what? Most of what you said is historically proven incorrect. All right, you educate me then, uh, you you historian. Okay, I, I'll answer your first question. We can we can we can come back question. to that. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna answer your question. So what's going on here? It seems pleasurable, and it seems like it brings joy. Why? But is, it's it's deceiving. Why it's is deceiving. that your job to come and take and, it from? And other what's people? happening here is actually leading people down the path of destruction. Opinion. No, it's God's word. See, yeah, I like this guy. That's it's where leading people down a path of, of destruction. Has an issue. It's because of this. It's like because this. God. It's no, because, it's because of what of God this. says. That's Religion, people hated Jesus. Jesus. There's three different things. People hated Jesus because he revealed their so dear, deeds were evil. I answered your first no, question. You didn't. You I said it's the deceiving on somebody else's sin. You didn't that's follow the judgment said. where it was okay to take somebody's joy away. And the reason you didn't answer that question is because. And look, I don't know if y'all can see this, but that same individual on the left hand of the screen in the yellow, just lingering around, not even not saying nothing, but listening. I'm just curious to see how this is going to play out, how he actually comes and gets saved. Because you can see the curiosity. He's just lingering around, just listening. It's not true joy. I answered your question purposely. It's not it true joy. My joy today. It's I'm deception. It's deception that leads I'm people down, change. down a path of that destruction. That's God's word. It's not my opinion. If you follow Jesus, you would know that. Jesus told us to go out and make disciples, and that's yeah. what we're doing. You guys are, f yeah, no. that's Jesus. You don't follow it. You gotta study the history of the Bible. You follow yeah, another Jesus. History. Okay, tell us the history of the Bible then. People like to make these claims, like you gotta study the history. It's not historically correct. Okay, then tell us. The history. Educate us then. You don't follow the real I don't Jesus. I follow anything, honey. You said I follow I, Jesus. No, I, I understand. I understand the teachings of Jesus. Okay, well, yeah, yeah you, you don't follow him. I do not agree with the church. We, on we pray way. for some people and they cry. We not destroy. Well, we okay, not okay, to but to do it here. Even if a hundred maybe don't rude. want, I feel one. Well, well, that's your opinion. Rude. That's not God's word. That's I your opinion. Kind of I think it's rude to have children around these over sexualized, perverted individuals. I think that's rude. I think that's sick. But we have two different viewpoints of this world. Us trying to give you life through the gospel of Jesus Christ is the most loving thing that we can do. But people think it's it, people people think it's rude because it's ruining their day of enjoying a pride festival. Sit in front of your house and sit there and do this. All and he's not even and granted. I didn't watch this entire video. I just skipped to this part. But from what I've seen, he's not one of those preachers who's out here yelling at people who's, you know, he's 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 talking loud because his voice is on a microphone, but he seems very calm, very composed, very full of love and grace. I don't know. Some people some people just love their sin way too much. They're just they're blinded. They're just blinded. They were, you couldn't watch TV, and that's basically what you did today. Yeah, that, that's and different. that's the difference between... Wait, hold on. What did she say? She really, she thinks she made a point. I need to hear what she said. Jesus, you would know that. Jesus told us to go out and make disciples, and that's yeah. what we're doing. You guys are... F yeah, no. That's Jesus. You don't follow... You, follow you gotta study the history of the Bible. You follow yeah, another Jesus. History. You don't follow the real Jesus. I don't Jesus. follow anything, honey. You said I follow I, Jesus. No, I, I understand. I understand the teachings of Jesus. Okay, well, yeah, yeah you, you don't follow him. I do not agree with the church. We, we pray for some people and they cry. We know this story. Well, that's we know okay, but to do it here. Even if a hundred maybe rude. don't want, I feel wanted. Well, that's your opinion. Rude. That's not God's word. That's I your opinion. I sit in front of your house and sit there and do this all day while you couldn't watch TV. And that's basically what you did today. Yeah, that, that's and different. that's the difference between the no. two of you, and that's because I that's because don't follow the teaching of Jesus. Watching TV is not I something emulate, that's going to kill, I that's going to lead to death. Jesus. What people are doing here. That was the dumbest thing. She said, 
I don't, she said, I don't follow the teachings of Jesus. I emulate Jesus. Here can lead them to this is how you emulate this is how you emulate Jesus in your life. This is clearly you don't know who Jesus is then if this is what you think emulating Jesus is. Yeah, we that's the difference. I didn't get that. Yeah, we know destroy his peace. Right. You live for Jesus for your whole life, everything. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. The part we've been waiting for. Let's see what happens. Something that's gonna kill, I that's gonna lead to death. Jesus. What people are doing here can lead them to death. We that's the difference. Yeah. We know destroy his peace. Right. Do you live for Jesus for your whole life? Everything? Yes, I'm baptized. I'm part of Is there of it. anything that's sinful in your life? No, I'm married in a relationship and it's... Is it a homosexual it? relationship? No. It's okay. Not. Is homosexuality a sin? No. Well, that's not God's word. My wife and I are married and that's that. No, that, that's, that's good. That's a straight marriage. That's God's word. But God's word says that homosexuality is a sin. Depends on translation. Not every translation. Well, it's Unless you have a, a homosexual Bible. No. I mean, I use King James Version. He said, he said, unless you have a homosexual Bible. Oh my God. And it says homosexuality is a sin. Pretty sure it doesn't. Where does it say that it's okay? And I'm not you got, you got my I phone. I just want to tell you the truth, man. Yeah. It's fine. But, no. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could look up different Bible scriptures that, that point to homosexuality being sin, but it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's something that, that the devil, it gives him access into our lives to work in our lives and to do different things and to bring harm. Um, things you, like that. Are so, all of you under the same same church group? The New Life? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, God loves you, man. We're we're for you, but we're, but we're ho for homosexuality, you. homosexuality being, um, the Bible says sin separates us from God. So that being a sin, it would keep you separate. From him and God wants you to be close to him, and that's what we desire as well. For you to be close to him. In the, in the same way, we can't console and pat you on the back and, and say, Hey, this lifestyle is great and it's awesome and we're accepting. And we we can't do that because that wouldn't be that wouldn't be true love. I, I know you might think differently, but that wouldn't be if we know that that's keeping you away from the Father, and we know that He is love and that He's good and He's amazing, then us just kind of patting you on the back where you're at, that wouldn't be, it would not in no means help anything. It wouldn't be loving towards you, it wouldn't help you get closer to Him, um, it, it, it wouldn't help anything. I, I think deep down, you you know homosexuality is homosexual, homosexuality is wrong and you probably have some guilt and shame that you constantly have to kind of fight off. Um, but but God can set you free and you, you've probably even in your past, you've probably even prayed about it. You know, God help me if this is wrong, you know, help me not do it and, I, and all this stuff. Um, and God can set you free from that right now. Like the, those desires and uh, what's controlling you and kind of giving you those, those desires and all that stuff, God can set you free from it um, right now. And, and you'll know um, right now it might be kind of hard, but if you come out of that and you look back, you'll start to see clearly everything um, that was happening in your life in a negative way. Um, not everything, but you'll see some of the negative things that are happening in your life and even the thoughts that you struggle with and different things um, that you're kind of constantly at war with. You'll see that that was the cause and you'll see from a free place. I actually just talked to someone Thursday. He was with me. She was with me, a girl who uh, God delivered her from homosexuality back in, I think it was 2017 or 18. Uh, in 2017, God delivered her and she's about to get married um, and she's, she's completely free from that lifestyle, but she lived in it for quite a while. So um, he did it for her, he did it for many other people. I have another friend, God delivered him out. I know that God can set you free 
And I know that if, if you'll allow us to, to pray for you in that way, um, then looking back, you're going to see um, how much that was bringing negativity into your life. Could we pray for you? Okay, sounds good. You will, what's your name again? Alex. Alex. That was a pretty crazy turnaround. Because he came in really defensive. And he came in. I, I was about to call this dude like a lamppost. Because he was just standing there. Just just nothing you say can affect me. And then as soon as they just kept going and going and going. And he kept ministering to him. You could see. You could even see it in the video. When he said, you know, you've probably been praying to God about, you know, to help you about, you know, this homosexuality that, that you're dealing with. And he was like nodding along with him. That's pretty wild. That's pretty wild. Okay. Father, I think that's a blessing. Wow. Okay. Let's see. Where the, let's 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 see where this goes. Thank you for Alex. Lord, I thank you for his life. Lord, your word says that you came to set captives free. They came to bring deliverance. So we speak freedom right now in Jesus' name. Anything that's trying to harm him, anything that's trying to keep him in bondage or captivity, command it to go now in Jesus' name. Command everything driving homosexual desires to leave now in Jesus' name. Any unclean spirits involved, command you to go now. Any trauma that would have taken place throughout his past, throughout his history, any kind of se sexual um, abuse, whether it was physical or whether it was someone speaking, just really perverted, twisted things, anything like that. Father, I pray that you bring healing to his heart right now, complete healing and wholeness, God. Any trauma that happened, even in his mind, God, I pray that you bring truth into his mind right now, God. Set him free from those thoughts in Jesus' name. I command any homosexual spirit, I'm just gonna pray how I can pray. I hope you don't get offended. I command any homosexual spirits to come out right now in Jesus' name. I command you to leave him. Go now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you all that you created Alex for. By your spirit and by your grace, God, I thank you that it will be fulfilled. But I thank you that this marks a huge change from this moment forward, from this day forward. God, I thank you that you're changing um, desires. You're changing even the path that, that he's walking on right now. God, I thank you for bringing so much healing and so much restoration, oh God, into even many relationships that have been cut off. Um, Lord, I thank you that you're bringing restoration into those relationships, healing and wholeness into those relationships right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, be whole, heart be healed right now. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you even for his, his boldness um, to stand here and allow us to pray for him, even while people that he knows are walking by that may judge him, that may not like it, that may even question him. Lord, I thank you for your spirit. Lord, you've truly drawn him, even as he said, that you've drawn him even to come over here. God, I thank you that he's being set free right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I release you from that bondage. I release you from those sins. If, if you'll just, um, just, just repeat after me, say, God, God. forgive me. For any sins I've committed, including homosexuality, set me free, Lord. Help me to do Your will. Jesus, You are Lord, and by Your Spirit, I will live completely for You. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I'm gonna pray one more time. Father, in Your authority, I release him from every bondage. I release him from all sin right now. I command those unclean spirits to go. Even as he's repented, you have no right to be here. You have no place. You cannot be here any longer. Go now, in Jesus' name. Lift off of him. Go now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Wow. Just say this. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. Fill, me fill me with the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit. I give my whole life to you. I give my whole life to you. Shine through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to put my hand on your shoulder. Be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. Be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, force everything else out. Any uncleanness or impurity, any shame and guilt, anxiety, depression, loneliness, heartache, command it to go now. In Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For even a, um, just taking those walls down, Lord, of his heart. And he's put up from so much hurt that's come towards him. Lord God, I thank you. You're removing those walls right now, and you're going to be the protector of his heart. He doesn't have to um, try to do it all himself, but Lord, you're going to guard his heart and his mind with your peace. In Jesus' name. Freedom right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you so much. Yeah. God bless you, man. Thank you. God bless you. I appreciate it. Appreciate Yeah. Would you want to... <laughs> would you want to meet up sometime and maybe grab lunch or something like that? Sure. And we uh, could talk. Do you have a... Uh, well, that's that's the church number. Bro, I'm getting chills. Wow. That's incredible. That's incredible. I want. I'm curious to know like a follow up with this uh, person. Or with this dude. I'm curious to know like how he's doing now. Let let me get uh let, 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 let me put your phone number in here. Okay. What's your what, what what's your number? I can just take it uh, down like this. Okay. Yeah, we can just get lunch sometime. Because a lot of people do not they, they forget that, they, they, they truly do, I feel like they forget about all the things that the Lord can do for them if they just let Him into their heart. Because it, he, he will take, He will only put you through the tribulation that you need to go through for you to be a better person, to be a good Christian, and to be able to praise Him. And so, like, He's only going to give you as much as you need to get where he wants you to go, given free will. I truly, I truly appreciate every one of y'all. I thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate, yeah, yeah. I appreciate your, just your boldness um, to come over and to talk to us. Yeah. And caring more about what God thinks than any people versus us or, or anyone. Yeah. He, led me, he led me over here and, I was like, I don't really want to be over here. This makes me uncomfortable, but the Lord told me to come over here and to, to, to he'll, help. He'll put us in a lot of uncomfortable situations. Yeah, I, I don't think it was very comfortable for for him to preach. You're throwing the wall in your knees. Yeah. Okay, because I'm not going to leave. Corbin's with you. So you're good? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah. He puts you where you need to be, and um, one of the good things about what I do for actual living is I could actually help. Wow, that's incredible. You know what I'm thinking as I'm watching this video? Because I was judging, I was judging and I was saying, you know what, this is not gonna be the type of person that's gonna be receptive to a prayer. I'm thinking that, right? And then look how it turned out. But you know how many times that I do that and probably you might do this too in your, in your own personal life, when God tells you to go pray for somebody and you see it through your own eyesight and you might say, I don't think that person is going to be open or receptive to, to a prayer. But you know what's so funny? Those are the people who are going to be the most receptive. The people that you think are, are not going to be receptive to it, they have that, that, that exterior. They have that wall built up. It's a setup though. They're waiting for somebody to come up to them and pray for them. They're waiting to drop that wall, but they need help in doing that. And I'm just thinking like, wow, going throughout the day, there's so many opportunities that we have to pray for people. And we might be missing opportunities simply because we're afraid to say, hey, can I pray for you? We're, we're afraid of the potential rejection. But what about the potential of them going to hell because you didn't pray for them? That's what I'm thinking right now in this moment. That's an incredible video. Um, I'm going to link it down below in the description. Nicholas Bowling Ministries. Um, I'm excited to see, you know, what happened with this dude after he, you know, got saved. Um, I'd be very curious in an update. So if anyone has an update or knows a video update, then drop it down below in the comments. 
That's all I got, y'all. I'm out.